while I'm arranging this setup, I realize I didn't do this type of video for quite some time now, right? I mean, this type of mean in studio video. Because uh, for some time I stopped producing any sort of videos and then I started to produce like kind of uh, um, vlog style video on every other day and then today I'm again back to in, in studio type video. So in this channel for at least uh, next few months I'm trying to produce uh, various of content not just a tutorial, tutorial live experiences and uh, some advices I learned and I have to give to you and certain things, tips and tricks I use on uh, day to day work, various things. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. I promise you it's not going to waste and you never regret by subscribing to this channel. So today I'm going to again explain some side of a practical situation you need to deal with when you're dealing with a messaging system. Let's say Kafka, right? In our example, but it, this can apply to uh, various messaging platform you're dealing with. So I'm going to explain real world example scenario you may face during this type of implementation. So let's assume you have a scenario where you uh, producer producing a messages in a very high rate, but you don't need to consume in the same rate. Okay. So for example, let's say he's producing like 100,000 messages per minute or 10,000 messages per minute, but you just need the summary of those data. There are various inbuilt techniques with Kafka you can deal with these type of things. Also, you have a framework like a Beam, so you can use this type of work. But I'm always prefer to handle these type of case with the own logic because then I have a full control. Okay, so I'm going to give you three type of options you are available to do this type of implementation. So you can choose what, but depend on your situation. So let's assume our scenario is you have a one produce, uh, sorry, you have a, a topic with a one partition and then uh, producer produces the message to that partition and then you are going to consume those messages. Your condition is you are consuming messages every one minute, but you consume to consume the message to qualify your process the message has to arrive at least one minute ago. So that means if the message arrival time and the current time is less than 60 seconds, you don't process this message. You are waiting this message to the next cycle. We call this a windowing concept, right? You open a window, you get, uh, grab messages and while grabbing messages, you inspect each message. If the arrival time and the current time is within a, uh, less than 60 seconds, you drop that message. If it is greater than 60 seconds, you read that message. You bucket it and then you send to the processing and then you open another window and you collect messages. That's how it works, right? So in our case, let's assume every one minute there is a cron job running and open the window and collect the messages, right? But the, what is the exit criteria? Exit criteria is if the message arrival time and the current time is less than 60 seconds. There are three type of uh, implementation you can use for this, but I'll explain each uh, options and the advantages and the disadvantages, okay? The first one is you open the connection, you open the window and then you open the connection to the uh, Kafka and then you collect the message and you disconnect the um, your connection to the Kafka, consumer disconnect. This is okay as long as you have a one partition and a one consumer. Because why? Because when you when you consumer is disconnected and then it will not try to reconnect again until you connect it again. But in order to do this to work, you have to handle the retry carefully, retry configuration, right? If you don't understand what is the uh, Kafka partition and what is the consumer, what is the relationship between consumer and the partition, the consumer groups, right? And what are the retry configuration and all those things, you must watch my last video, go to the Kafka playlist and watch those videos because there I in detail explain uh, Kafka and partition consumer groups and all those uh, things how are interconnected and how to configure those to have a smooth running, right? I'm not going to explain those here. Right, back to the story. So now if you have a one consumer and a one partition, disconnection doesn't do any harm, right? Let's say you have more logics in this service and in future you have to scale this service. So now what happened? You have one partition, but the consumer service is scaled up to let's say five instances. So now what happened based on the nature of the Kafka, there are four other instances work as a hot consumers. That means they are not really connected to the Kafka, but they are waiting to connect. The moment this disconnection happened, there can be a rebalance triggered. Why? Because there are hot consumers. Now they are they, one of them will going to come back again and connect. 
so that is not a good uh, health condition for the processing the messages so disconnection is not a good idea in case you are in expecting to um, scale your services that's out of the option so the second option is so let's say you start your consumer you're consuming messages now you uh, can con uh, consume 25 messages now you consume the 26 message so that means the consumer after 26 and you see that is created within one minute that means the create time and the current time is a 58 seconds so you need should not process this message this message is need to wait for the next window okay so now you need to set the consumer back consumer offset back to 25th sorry 26th why because you need the 26th message again okay so there you can do two options one is a seek another one is a set consumer offset if you set the C, you need to understand if you have a multiple partitions and the multiple consumers, okay, then setting the C will not affect consumer group wide, okay. Setting the C only affecting to the current consumer. Let's say you have, let's say three partitions. For, uh, partition number one, consume offset is 10. Partition number two, consume offset is 15. Partition number three, consume of offset is 20. Right? So if you set the seek, seek only will affect the base on the partition you are setting to the current consumer. It doesn't affect on the consumer group Y. But if you set the consume offset, set consume offset command, and then that will affect to the consumer group okay so consumer group mean all the consumers in the same group will affect it so therefore you need to be very careful which one is using set consumer uh, i don't exactly remember the command it is it's in set consumer offset as i remember that but whatever the command is is a similar thing so the meaning is you are setting the consumer offset that is affecting the consumer group but if you say the seek it is affecting the current consumer okay so now you need to think based on my situation whether it's work or not the third option is you pause okay you pause mean you open a connection and then you collect the messages now you're seeing a message like okay this message is now 26 message it is i can read it because the current time and the message arrival time is a 58 second gap it has to be a uh, 60 second or more in order to consume so now what i need to do is i need to put this message back to the kafka and tell hey you need to send me this message again okay and so you pause the consumer right again we have the same problem whether you use the seek or whether you use the consumer offset in this case i would do i keep the last consume message the the message i need to consume again on a redis or a, any any external distributed uh, caching mechanism because i don't want to keep a message within the memory variable because in case service restart be between this window and the next window i will lose the last consume uh, offset so what I would do is, I read the messages, now let's say simulate our same example, 25th message came, 26th message came, okay, that message I need to read again because the message arrival time and the current time is 58 seconds. So now what I would do is, I remember this in the cache, I save this message as a cache, 26th message I need to start again and I post the consumer, right? So my cron job will start my consumer again in another uh, one minute after. So then what will happen is I go, I read the variable. Ah, okay, I should start from 26. I seek the message. Remember, I should not set, set consume offset. Why? Because it's affecting on the other consumers on the consumer group. Since I am only concerned about this, I seek the message by passing the partition 26 and I read the message from there. Right? So that would be the good sustainable option. But again, it depends on your use case and so and so. But disconnecting is a one option can use it is nothing but this is the exact way to do it it's entirely depend on your use case but you should not use the disconnection if you have a more than one partitions right i mean still it will work but it create uh, so many problems on down the line so i'm going to show you a demo right and here now i'm not going to like write this code from the beginning because this is a very simple one i already uh, created this so you can see i have a kafka uh, service Right, so here I have um, Kafka consumers and I have a, a test topic. So I let, let me change the topic to like different topic. So then we can start from the beginning. And these are private brokers. Don't try those brokers. It will not going to work, right? Because those are private. It's not open. 
and then I'm going to change the consumer group name as well and then I'm going to set uh, this thing is fine okay so let me explain the code so what it does is on module init I am going to I'm going to connect to the consumer and also going to connect the producer producer is here just to simulate the situation right and then I start the consumer messages I have a very simple logic created so what my logic is if the current second that means let's say in a minute you have a 60 second get the current timestamp if the current second is greater than 30 that means I'm going to pause the consumer right so this is a not a practical real life situation but you can you have to put this logic as a current second uh, replace with your logic right so if the current second is greater than 30 I'm going to pause right and uh, it's a pausing consumer okay and then um, the consumer is paused if not consumer will read the messages and it will print with this uh, equal signs because then I can easily see in the logs okay and then producer will keep producing messages then I have a separate um, cron service right so this one what this does is every minute it uh, wake up and it print a log saying cron started and then it do the resume consumer what the resume consumer does is if the consumer is already paused and then it will um, it will like see the last offset it get the last offset value and it seek and get the last offset value and then start to resume from there right so that mean in our case if it is a 26 message is uh, the next message to read 26 message will come back okay so that's a very simple setup let me to um, run this so it's connected based on the current time it will uh, work right so now 15 16 so you will see right um, so it's consumed the messages because we are less than uh, 30 right 26 27 28 29 30 now it will post the consumer so you can see consume the post right so now you can see you just produce the messages but you don't consume the messages okay so in the next minute when the next minute start when the second is reset to zero it will consume the message you can see last six messages i read is a 16 16 messages are disqualified right so i need to start the, from the 16 again i should not read from the 17 because i need to read the 16 message again because it is the next window 59 0 so now it's consumer start okay so now you can see we are reading again from 16 right here 15 when the 16 message comes we realize ah, okay this is a this is a wrong message i should read this again in the next window so i pause the consumer and then okay i'm reading from here again so this is a very simple setup right and i will uh, share this uh, uh, git repository within the within the description so you can try out if you want but make sure you replace it with your own brokers because these brokers uh, won't work for you because this is in my private account right so that's it so that is how you can um, use the kafka in a more controlled way okay then talk to you in a new in studio video but before that I will, I will talk to you again. Okay.